What if I told you that the world's most dangerous shark, one that can live in both salt water and fresh water, might be living here in Ontario? Would you believe it? They actually had documented bull sharks stuck in the Great Lakes. Yes, I'd heard about that. It's pretty amazing. Yeah. Five, there was an attack by a bull shark in Lake Michigan, in Chicago. What? Mystery remains. It's possible this shark was living in the Ohio River, but kind of unlikely, and we may never know for sure. In this video, we will examine the facts of this ecological possibility to determine how much of it is fact and how much is fiction. Most wildlife enthusiasts today are already aware that bull sharks can live in fresh water. That's nothing new. They have a special ability called osmor regulation, which allows them to adjust their bodies to handle both the salty ocean water and completely fresh rivers and lakes. For example, a newspaper article even claims that there were some living in a small lake on a golf course for 17 years. From 1996 to 2013, a golf course lake at Carr Brook, Logan City, Queensland, Australia, was the home to several bull sharks. What's funny, though, is uh, the golf course actually capitalized on the novelty, changing their logo to feature the sharks and hosting a monthly tournament called the Shark Lake Challenge. So really, if a bull shark moves into fresh water, <laughs> it can survive for years, no problem at all, with hardly any need to ever go back to salt water. It can swim up crazy far, and there are some incredible examples of this. One would be that a bull shark swam 4,000 kilometers up the Amazon River to Iquotas in Peru. In 1937, a bull shark was actually caught in Alton, Illinois. In Central America, they've actually been found breeding in Lake Nicaragua. So when these sharks go inland, it's not just a short visit. They're likely living in there. They're moving in. So when you look at a map of where bull sharks have been documented, you might be second guessing whether they're in the Great Lakes or not. Over the years, reports have gathered of sharks being in the Great Lakes, of fishermen catching them, or even people possibly getting attacked by them. In 1955, a young boy was swimming in Lake Michigan when suddenly he got attacked by a shark. Or at least that's a story. Anytime reporters have looked into this historical event to find any evidence that this ever happened, their efforts always come up blank. However, it is worth noting that occasionally, dead sharks are known to be found on our shores. However, local media has always suspected that this is just a prank. Speaking of mischief, back in 2014, Hollywood actually caused some misinformation since Discovery Channel staged a hoax by planting a fake shark in Lake Ontario to promote that year's upcoming Shark Week. And of course, every couple of years, blurry photos pop up on social media of so-called sharks in the lakes, which usually turn out to be sturgeon, muskie, or bofin. Today, they can't swim up the Mississippi River all the way to the Great Lakes like they could have in the 1930s because there's been a lot of dams put in place that would stop that. However, there still could be three ways in which a bull shark could enter the Great Lakes. Theory 1. There's a YouTube video called How Bull Sharks Possibly Got Into the Great Lakes, and it dives into what is called the ballast water theory. The idea is simple. Ocean-going freighters fill their ballast tanks with seawater to stabilize the ship's weight and balance during long voyages. If a juvenile bull shark just happened to get sucked in along with schools of bait fish and other small marine life, in theory, it would kind of be like a fish tank that would have enough food for the shark during the trip. The closest bull shark range off the U.S. East Coast, a journey like that to the St. Lawrence River would just take days maybe even a week, depending on the vessel. And here's the key part. Once those ships reach the Great Lakes, they release all that ballast water into fresh water, dumping whatever was inside the tanks directly into our Great Lakes. And this is actually how some experts claim the round goby likely got into our waters as well. So in theory, if the bull shark had proper oxygen, temperature, and food during his short week-long voyage, this genuinely could work. Theory two. Now, there's also the possibility that if a bull shark ever did show up in the Great Lakes, it wouldn't be by nature at all, but by pet owners. He also figures that someone caught it maybe in the Gulf and then dumped it into our river. 
You see, across North America, there have been countless cases of people keeping exotic pets and dumping them when they can't take care of them anymore. Why would anyone ever keep a bull shark? Well, people like sharks, people like aquariums, and people like little maintenance on the aquariums. There'd be a ton of benefit to keeping a shark that can live in fresh water in a fish tank. And since these animals grow big, eventually they would have to let it go. So as crazy as it sounds, this pet ownership theory is actually one of the only realistic ways that a bull shark could end up in the Great Lakes. Now, we need to address this next theory because it is just logically where a mind is gonna go. The St. Lawrence River connects directly to the Atlantic, and some people would argue that if a bull shark can swim up the Mississippi, one could nose its way through the St. Lawrence River all the way to the Great Lakes. And don't get me wrong, some cold water species of sharks, like the massive Greenland shark, the poor beagle, and even the smaller spiny dogfish have all been recorded in the lower estuary of the St. Lawrence River. However, there are some reasons why the bull shark specifically has never been recorded in these waters. And we'll get into that later. But for humor's sake, if a rogue bull shark did manage to stray away from its native range, swim up the St. Lawrence River, it really would only be able to get so far without human help. The St. Lawrence actually has one natural obstacle and two man-made obstacles like the Mississippi dams and natural barriers that stop it from progressing into the Great Lakes. So you may be wondering if that's the case and these barriers are put in place, how do the cargo ships ever get to the Great Lakes? And that's a great question. The cargo ships actually use the St. Lawrence Seaway, which is a system of canals, locks, and channels that allows ocean-going ships to bypass these barriers and reach the Great Lakes. So once again, without the ships carrying them in the ballast tank, there's no way a bull shark could ever make this route. So let's continue this theory. Once a shark would get dumped out into the Great Lakes, what would happen? Well, realistically, the shark would face two challenges which would only allow it to live in the Great Lakes for a short period of time. The first is the cold. Bull sharks thrive in warm water, usually above 70 degrees Fahrenheit because they're a tropical fish. And the Great Lakes are not tropical. <laughs> they, they spend most of the year far colder than 70 degrees Fahrenheit, which makes long-term survival impossible. Second would be habitat. Truth is, the Great Lakes are just not really the environment that bull sharks are built for. If they were here, they'd kind of be like a fish out of water struggling to survive. Despite all that, one thing I have learned with my wildlife investigations though, is never to rule something out completely if I don't have to. If I am to really prove that bull sharks can be transported into the Great Lakes and survive even short term, I actually need help from you guys. If you guys have any photographs or videos you've taken of bull sharks being in the Great Lakes or any shark, please don't hesitate to send it to me guys. Send it to my email at fishingurbanontario at gmail.com. Whether I'm receiving photographs and videos or sightings from uh, people on black panthers, cougars, wolves, rattlesnakes, or sharks, one thing I always make sure to do is to keep all the sources of my information, all the people, anonymous. So don't worry, send it my way. I'd really love to see it. I'd love to hear your story, and I might be able to use it as possible proof in a future video. If you are curious if people are gonna send me any videos of bull sharks being in the Great Lakes, there's really only one way you guys can find out that update and that would be to hit the subscribe button down below. Uh, if I get any promising videos or pictures, I will no doubt share it on the channel. And you might wanna see that if you find this topic as cool as I do. Anyways guys, thank you for watching. I know my videos aren't perfect, but I truthfully do try to keep them informal and educational and just really fun to watch. And if you like this video, you'll definitely love the ones that are gonna come in the future. So I'd hit that subscribe button down below. You don't wanna miss out. And until next time, thanks for watching and take care.